Welcome to No Longer Conformed. I'm Eric Garthy, and we are studying seven churches of Revelation from Revelation chapters two and three. In, in this session, we'll be looking at Revelation chapter two, verses eight to 11, Smyrna. The church in Smyrna was experiencing great persecution. And so Jesus reminded them that he is the first and the last. He's the one who created all things, and he's the one who will end all things. Why remind the church of this? Well, Jesus was persecuted. His enemies falsely accused him, beat him, spit on him, tore out his beard, gave him a crown of thorns, and nailed him to a cross. And yet, verse 8 reads, and to the angel of the church of Smyrna write these things, says the first and the last, who was dead and came to life. Jesus has always existed. Jesus will never cease to exist. Jesus died and then triumphed when he resurrected. The city of Smyrna is located 35 miles north of Ephesus. It was a an important seaport and continues to be. It thrives today as Izmir, Turkey. It's a beautiful city that possesses an amphitheater that seated over 20,000 people 2,000 years ago. The name Smyrna is a variation of the word myrrh, which means bitter. Matthew chapter 2 verse 11 records myrrh as one of the gifts of the Magi. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Mark states in, in Mark 15, 23, that it was offered to Jesus on the cross. Then they gave him wine mingled with myrrh to drink, but he did not take it. John tells us in, in John 19, verse 39, that it was used for the burial of Jesus. And Nicodemus, who at first came to Jesus by night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes. Why such a name for this city? In the panorama of history, it represents the martyred church of the second and third centuries. Smyrna was the main center of the Caesar cult. And there's a temple there in honor of uh, Emperor Tiberius. Many Christians suffered for refusing to participate in emperor worship. And Jesus knew this would happen. When Christ described himself as the one who was dead and came to life, he was offering hope of the resurrection to the persecuted believers. Verse 9 reveals much. Tribulation, poverty, and yet God's grace amid the difficulties made them spiritually wealthy. Notice who helped provoke persecution. Jews, well, actually apostate Jews, who say they're Jews and are not. Instruments of Satan, a synagogue of Satan. They rejected the Messiah and became tools of the enemy to attack the faithful. Judaism of the day served Satan just as the emperor worship did. These Jews were basically spiritual pagans, like Christians today who refuse to serve the Lord, but are willing to stir up trouble for those who are faithful. The Bishop of Smyrna was Polycarp, a disciple of John. He was the last link to the apostles in, in, uh, in church history. The church was born into persecution, and history records 10 periods of official persecution against the church over 250 years by Roman emperors. First, there was Nero from 64 to 68 AD. He burned Rome, and he blamed the Christians, and he fed them to wild animals. Then there was Domitian from 90 to 96 AD. He killed thousands in Rome. And then Trajan, uh, 104 to 117 AD. He outlawed Christianity. 
It was against the law to be a Christian. Marcus Aurelius from 161 to 180 AD. He tortured and beheaded Christians. Severus, 200 to 211. He burned Christians alive. Maximinius from 235 to 237 AD. He, just, he killed Christians wherever he could find them. And then Decius in two, 250 to 253, he attempted to completely wipe out Christianity from earth. And then Valerian, 267 to 270 AD, he also tried to wipe out Christianity, which tells you that um, Decius wasn't successful. Aurelian, from 270 to 275, he persecuted Christians any way that he could. And then, of course, lastly, Diocletian, 303 to 312, he burned the scriptures so that there wouldn't be any propagation of the gospel of the Bible. Persecution, listen, Persecution is the lot for Jesus Christ church. So the Lord encourages his disciples and he does it in two ways. First, Jesus wants you to lay up treasures in heaven. Verses eight and nine. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, these things says the first and the last who was dead and came to life. I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you're rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they're Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Jesus knows your suffering and he knows all your need. But you're his re redeemed and have eternal life. But you are rich. Look at Matthew chapter six, verses 19 to 21. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither more moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. We can be rich in temporary things on earth or we can be rich in permanent heavenly things. Let me ask you, where are you storing treasure? And there are always those who will attack you. Jesus spoke of a group of slanderers. They called themselves Jews, but they really worked for Satan. Churches today have religious pretenders. And yet Jesus knows exactly who they are. Christians are called to be faithful in persecution. And second, Jesus does not want you to be afraid. Look at verses 10 and 11. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and that you will have tribulation 10 days. Be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear to hear and an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Jesus knew that Satan intended to attack. Matthew 10, 28 states, and do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. All authority is from God himself. Satan may test us, but it's the Lord who allows it. Why? To strengthen us for his service or in his service. You will have tribulation 10 days. Maybe Jesus was referring to those 10 coming from Roman persecutions. Satan will be active motivating men to evil acts, prison, tested, tribulations. Christians are called to be faithful until the moment of death. And you will receive the crown of life. Jesus had no condemnation for this church or for the one at Philadelphia, only exhortation. Do not fear, be faithful unto death. James chapter one, verse 12, blessed is the man who endured. 
It's temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Verse 11 encourages, he who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. What is the second death? Well, the first death is physical. The second death is spiritual. Revelation 20, verses 14 and 15. And then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. In John chapter 3 and verse 3, Jesus declared, unless one is born of God, he cannot see the kingdom of God. There are two births and two deaths. If you're born just once, you will die twice. But if you're born twice, you will die just once. When persecution comes, continue to gain riches in heaven and don't be afraid of Satan. The believer will share in the resurrection, not the destruction. Are you prepared to die for your faith? Are you ready to stand faithful? You give that thought. You consider that and you have a great day.